There are many things in Granite that aren't overtly obvious, like using jerky racks to make leather and sending grass planks and weed stems down zip lines. I've covered both those things in previous videos as well as many others, but today I'm going to tell you 10 more things Grounded doesn't tell you but should. First up on our list is that sleeping in a bed in Grounded actually provides you a better bonus than sleeping in the lean-to. Aside from looking nicer, it actually does give you a bonus. So if we go to the crafting options here, you're going to notice the lean-to just says sleep to bypass the extra dangerous nighttime or set a respawn point to return to in the event of death. The simple bed, however, says a simple yet comfy bed that offers up a good night's sleep. Waking up here really pumps you up for the day. What this doesn't tell you is that you actually get a bonus from sleeping. It's kind of vague here. So you're gonna, I'm going to check my status here, and you see we have no status. I'm going to sleep in this bed, and then I'm going to wake up in the morning and show you what the status is gained from sleeping in the bed are. So we woke up from our night's rest in our bed, and if we go over and check our status tab, what we're going to see is that we, in fact, now have comfy hunger and comfy thirst. Comfy hunger is sleeping in a comfy bed grants all, all day bonus to hunger fullness. Comfy thirst, sleeping in a comfy spot grants an all day bonus to thirst saturation. What that means is for the for the rest of this day, basically, I'm going to be having a slower thirst and hunger drain, which means I'm going to need to eat less and drink less. This is really, really super useful in woe mode where your hunger and thirst drain super quickly. It's also useful in the other game modes. The second thing Grounded doesn't tell you but should is that all melee weapons in the game have combos and that not all the attacks from the combos deal the same amount of damage. So in my hand, I have a dagger. All daggers in the game have a two-hit combo. So you're going to notice we do this swing and this swing. If we repeat it, we're going to do the same swings back and forth. The first swing does one-third the damage of the second swing. That means if you only land the first swing, you're going to deal far less damage. So you're going to want to make sure you hit both hits. For all other melee weapons, they have three-hit combos. So you'll notice here I have a spiky sprig. It's going to do the one hit, second hit, and then the overhead hit for three. The first attack is going to do 50% of the second attack, and the third attack is going to do 150%. That means to get the expected damage from all three attacks, you're going to have to land all three of them. I believe the reason this was added was because of block canceling, because basically what you can do is you could swing and then block cancel to cancel the animation. And this allowed ba basically using the high highest damage weapons as super DPS weapons. Now, because of the combo system, it kind of makes it where you have to be more careful because block canceling just means you're going to do half the damage on every hit. So you don't want to end up doing that. The third thing Grounded doesn't tell you but should is that mosquitoes will not spawn into the grasslands until you turn in your first super chip. That means you can collect up to all four super chips before any mosquitoes will spawn into the grasslands. Now by grasslands, what I'm talking about is going to be the koi pond area here by the oak tree south down towards the house. There are mosquitoes over here on the north side of the koi pond, and I did see one in the bird bath, but all the ones that spawn in the flooded zone, the ones that would normally be over here by the soda cans, and then the flooded zone over there by the hedge, there are no mosquitoes over there until you turn in your first super chip. I can confirm this is definitely working in my new woe mode save. I've collected two of the super chips, but I have not turned them in yet, and I have not had to fight a single mosquito. This is really helpful, especially in WOMO, because mosquitoes, like the bees, can actually do a tremendous amount of damage with their dive attacks. So it's super useful. You can take advantage of it, especially if the things that it would unlock by turning in those chips are not really worth it to you. So basically, you can take your time and end up getting all the super chips before having to fight any mosquitoes in the grasslands, if you choose to do so. Next up on our list is that food bonuses do not stack. However, you can stack a food bonus with a smoothie bonus. So I've crafted a couple of f meals here, and I've also made myself this smoothie. So I want to eat the Larvania and the Spider Slider just to show you they don't stack because they both have plus critical hit chance. If I go over here to my status, you're going to notice I only have the ones from sleeping as well as the quickness from my aphid slippers, and I have light. obviously the aphid slippers are light armor. So if I go over here and I consume the Larvania, we're going to go over here to our statuses, and you're going to notice now I have the well-fed bonus, the meal, and then I have the critical hit chance, and the clock's slowly click ticking down. I go back to my inventory and eat the spider slider and consume it. Go back to my status effects. You're going to notice I do not have the double chance. All it did was increase the time because the spider slider being a tier two gives you a longer buff. So you cannot stack those. However, what you can do is actually stack the smoothie with the meal. So I have a black ox burger here, which is going to give me plus damage resist. And I have the human food, which is going to give me damage resist. Now, what this should do is actually eating this meal should overwrite the critical hit chance. So if I consume this and go back to my statuses, you're going to notice that I only have the max. It gives me max health plus the damage resist because those are the two bonuses from it. It has now removed the critical hit chance. That means not only can you not stack two of the same meal on top of each other, whatever the last meal you ate is going to overwrite the previous one. So we have this damage resist. Now, if I go back over here and consume this smoothie, which also has the damage resist, I should have double smoothie if it's working as expected or double bonus as if it's working as expected. And you'll notice here that I have the damage resist from the meal, and I also have the damage resist here from the smoothie in two separate things. So just to recap, 
eating a meal will give you a bonus. If you eat two of the same meal, it's not going to give you double. The second meal is going to overwrite the first one, but you can stack bonuses by drinking a smoothie and a meal. And you can also drink many smoothies. So if you want to go into a boss fight and drink one of each one of these smoothies, you'll get all these bonuses because none of the smoothies have the same bonus effects. So you can just do that and it'll just give you the maximum number of bonuses. Fifth on our list of things the game doesn't tell you but should, and this is one that I get asked every time I stream, at least a couple people come in and say, how do you do this? And that's that you can rename storage baskets and storage chests now. So if you go into the storage basket here, you'll notice that you used to be able to do this and you still can. You can go down here and you can put symbols on it with different colors. So if I wanted to put this and make it a green leaf and then back out, and then we'll notice that it has this little green leaf on it, but you can also name them now. And to name them on mouse and keyboard, you just click up here where it says storage basket and we can just call this basket and we press enter and back out and you'll notice it says basket it also has the leaf if we want to take the leaf off we can just go down here to the icon and put none and then it'll take it back off so we just have basket if you're playing on pc but you're using a controller you're still gonna have to use the mouse and keyboard for this i've tested this out if you're playing on console you simply go over to this field press the letter a and it'll let you rename it it should bring up a keyboard to let you rename it the same function works over here for the storage chest you can pick the icon if you'd like to have an icon or you can just type in here and call it chest and that'll just make it super easy because I'm sure once you play the game long enough, you're going to have lots of baskets and lots of chests with different things in them. It's much easier to see them with the name on them than using the vague symbols that are given. So that's how you rename storage baskets and storage chests. Sixth on our list of things the game doesn't tell you but should. This one's more of a cosmetic thing that is not really going to impact gameplay, but it's something that I get asked at least once or twice a week. And that's how do you change the color of your OS? So basically the scabs that you collect around in the game that are around the map they're optional to collect but they are part of the 100 percent achievement you can use those to change the color scheme of your scab so you're going to notice here as the clock's ticking down i'm going to change it to high contrast so you're going to notice that you all you do once you collect a scab is you go down here to the os and you can pick it from the drop down menu now it just so happens it's about to be nighttime so they're going to change colors so they're set between different colors as you can see this one turns on at 7 a.m and then once we hit the, what is this, 10, uh, 8 p.m., it changes to night mode. You can go in here at any time and change these to whatever ones you like. So if you find a new one you like, you can go in there and change it. So that's how you change the color of your OS. The seventh thing Granite doesn't tell you but should is that the marble and quartzite stones that you'll find around the map do not respawn. Now, if you play the game in early access, you'll probably remember there used to be quartzite stones. They did respawn every couple of in-game days. So they basically were an infinite resource. The new brittle quartzite, the sturdy and supreme quartzite as well as the brittle sturdy and supreme marble stones are one time only once you break this so once i break this thing i want to get the shards from it this is never going to respawn however you can later on unlock the ability to craft these shards using bug parts but the game does not tell you these do not respawn so basically what that means is early on and even as you're playing through you're probably going to want to be pretty cautious on what you upgrade so you don't just want to go upgrade everything you every new weapon or armor you find craft because you'll end up just burning through them and it's going to take you forever to grind the resources from the bug parts to upgrade future armors and weapons. Next up on our list of the things the game doesn't tell you are that not all arrows deal stabbing damage. So normally an arrow does stabbing damage. The regular arrow does stabbing damage, the feather arrow does stabbing damage, and even the tier 3 arrow, arrow does stabbing damage. However, there are four arrows that I know of that do not do stabbing damage. They are the spicy, mint, salt, and sour. These are basically the candy upgraded arrows. Now why is this important? It's important because many of the beefier enemies are resistant to stabbing. As an example here, the wolf spider is resistant to stabbing. That means if I use a regular arrow, it's going to take less damage. If I use a spear or a sword that does stabbing damage, I'm going to do less damage. However, if I use a spicy arrow, which you can see it's weak to, it'll actually do more damage. So what, what this is useful for is, especially late game, if you're fighting enemies that are too tough for you to fight melee, you can take advantage of using the candy arrows. Specifically, like the mint arrow does really good work against the infected wolf spider. So take advantage of that while you can, because I'm not sure if this is intended or not, but it is how it currently works. The final two things the game doesn't tell you, but should are going to be minor spoilers. So if you have not finished the game or don't want to have any of the new, new content spoiled, I recommend just tuning out right now and coming back and checking later. For those of you who want to stick around, I'm going to jump into this, but everybody else, make sure you hit the like button on the way out. And for everybody else, let's continue. So the next tip on our list is going to be that the orc bugs, which you're going to see here, there's the fire worker ants, there are the orb juniors and the bombardier beetles. These will start spawning in after you have completed the, I believe it's the undershed area. Once you've rescued Dr. Wendell Tully, and as you can notice, here's a couple of them. These guys are actually weak to sour attack. So I have the sour battle axe on my hand and you're going to notice this thing's going to probably shred this thing in half right here. 
So it three shots it. So the orc bugs are actually weak to sour. The game doesn't tell you this because you cannot peep them. This is really, really useful for the final defense. If you have the sour battle axe leveled up, you will just shred through the enemies, especially if you have Ant Annihilator on. It's going to make the last defense super easy, even though it's already been made easier. The last thing on our list of things the game doesn't tell you is going to involve the ending of the game. So if you're not aware, the game actually has two endings. If you've played up through the Undershed area, you'll know that once you rescue Dr. Wendell Tully, who's over there, he's going to tell you to go up to the Java Matic, which is up here in the top center of the map right here, and tell you to defend it to finish the game, basically. It's going to allow you to unshrink yourself. Now, if you do that, you're going to get the what's quote unquote bad ending, which is where I'm not going to spoil the ending for you if you haven't seen it, but basically you're going to get the short slash bad ending. If you want to get the full slash good ending, you're going to have to do one other thing before actually going over there, defending the Java Matic. So after you rescue Dr. Tully, what you can do is go up here to Castle Moldork, go down inside the basement of it. You're going to have to defeat Director Schmechter. If you do that and then go to the Java Matic, you're going to get the good ending. So Grounded does have two endings. The game doesn't tell you that. In fact, you probably won't even know about the good ending because more likely than not, if you follow the story like I did on my fresh playthrough, I basically was told, went down there, rescued him, and then it said, go do the Java Matic. And I had no idea until people in my chat told me that there was a second ending, that that was the ending of the game. Because I was kind of confused as to why the game did not tell me to go all the way up here to the top right of the map or do any of this upper area. So in fact, you have two endings. They're, it's basically optional which one you get. You can get both of them. If you want to get both of them, what I would recommend doing is before you do the Java Matic the first time for the short ending, because you have to do that one first, create a save file, make sure you have a hard save and type title it full ending or something like that. And then wait a couple minutes, save again, and then just continue from there. And then do the final defense. After you do that and see that ending, then what you can do is reload that other save that you made, go over, finish the rest of the upper yard, beat the director over in the castle and then go the job do the job of matic again and then you will see the final ending so those are 10 things the game doesn't tell you but should if you found this video helpful make sure to hit the like button and here's another video you might find helpful as well